Shalom Yasharala. It's my lot coming back with another lesson to piggyback off the first one. Uh, this lesson is going to be titled Iconoclast The Destruction and Whitewashing of Religious Images. Okay, the previous video I did went into detail about people of the Bible having a physical description of being dark-skinned people okay so today we're going to get into why these images are portrayed throughout the world as being Caucasian people okay um, just a little bit of history on iconoclast this is when you do your research, you're going to go into a period in time that we know is the Renaissance, right? The rebirth, we should say, yeah, the rebirth of the Caucasian race, pretty much. When they came into power, start colonizing all these lands in Europe as their own, okay? They came into power and destroyed all the religious images that show that all these people are black people. And then the images that are still up they whitewash them or they create new images of white men to be the angels the most high and yahawasha right so we're going to get into why all these images are white from the chapels and temples to the vatican and the sistine chapel um, we're going to get into depth of why these images are set up and portrayed throughout the world okay uh first scripture we're gonna get to is job 9 24 job 9 24 Job 9.24 it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked okay he covereth the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he okay Job 9.24 is the introduction into this lesson this is what we're going to start building from okay as we can tell from the portraits set up, all these portraits are of one nation of people, the Caucasian race, right? It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So if we, we know that these are not the original images um, portraying the original people of the biblical stories, then this, these images they set up are evidence against them of who the Bible is speaking on when it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Okay, they rule this earth. They rule the media, the military. Um, they uh, colonize different lands and take over all the resources. They own everything. This whole earth is given to them. Okay, they're in rulership. It says, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof, if not, where and who is he? So this is why we see these images of white people instead of black people. When we can go into the Bible and clearly see that all these, uh, the prophets, apostles, the Most High, the angels, and Yahweh are all black people, right? We're going to go to Lamentations 5.12. Lamentations 5.12. Princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of the elders were not honored. Okay, so this is just another precept to show you that the faces, the the images that should be portrayed are not accurate 
and the Bible speaks on this is in length. This is just one other detail to link up with uh, Job 9:24 to help paint a picture. Uh, Isaiah 28:9 and 10 says, um, "For precept must be upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little." Right. So it says. Princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of the elders were not honored. One way they did not honor our faces is by portraying other people as being us in a way to take our history from us and disconnect us from who we are uh, in the large scope of things, right? Next, we're going to go to jo or First Maccabees 3, verse 48. Just another precept for the introduction of this lesson, right? The milk of the lesson. 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. Okay, so at one point in time at... Uh, well, every time the Israelites go into slavery and it's a major war or what have you... Our records are taken by other people, yes. But this is not um, a solid premise if you want to debate that the Bible has been altered. Okay? Um, just because these other people have had our records in possession does not mean they altered them. Um, so, in this verse, it's telling you that... During this period in time, we got our book back and we, it says, and laid open the book of the law, which is the Bible, our history, our records, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. Just going back to these white uh, iconoclasts, right? Destruction and whitewashing of religious images, uh, primarily biblical images of the people of the Bible, right? So, uh, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 14, 15. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, 15, because this person, the... the original images that they start putting up the first, I should say, the first Caucasian images they start putting up were modeled after a real man. Okay, his name is Cesar Borges, son of uh, Pope Alexander the Sixth. Okay, and after he died, his father decided to get um, Michael and Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci to come up with portraits, sketches to portraits of his son to present him as the Most High Son, Yahawasha, Jesus, right? So, um, a lot of people take the Bible for fiction or fantasy, but this is a historical book of one nation of people and their interaction with other nations, okay? And we're going to get all the history behind these white images from the Bible. Okay, just to show you that this Bible is prophetic and it speaks on things happening before it happens. And that is, it, it's intertwined with our historical records and what happened to us as a people throughout time. Okay, so Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 15, okay? Like I said, after uh, Cesar Borges was, uh, after he died, his his father, Pope Alexander VI, put up this portrait to um, exalt his son as God, so he would be honored as God. And, and then he, it was established as a law. Okay, and we'll get into that. And right up. Yeah, right after I read this, we're going to get into more verses that explain this more in detail, right? Okay, 
So, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, 15. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he had when he hath made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Okay, this is a law that they established. You have to worship this image, and we're going to get into this in other um, verses, other precepts, right? It says, um, Thus in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings, whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage, okay, the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an express image of a king who they honored to the end that by his by this their for their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present also the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition Okay, this is all telling you that these these Caucasian images are lies. And this is how they were they began to um destroy these images and whitewash them. Okay? And the Bible has the history on this and length. When it was set up, we're reading that now. This is uh why it was set up, who it was set up by. Pope Alexander VI and uh, his son being the model for the image, uh, Cesar Borgias. Okay. Uh, where was uh Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. The artificer is the uh, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, the artist, right? Okay, verse 19. For he peradventure willing to please one in authority forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. Okay, so they, they it, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci are famous artists. Okay, and this is, this is something that is amazing to people who never heard anything like this that this king would get together these two great artists for this one purpose which is setting up a false image of the messiah right okay for he peradventure willing to please one in authority forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion and so the multitude Allured by the grace of the work, took him now for a god, which a little before was but honored as a man. Okay? And this was an occasion to deceive the world. Okay, this image was set up to deceive the world. And um, after this, we're going to get into more things in the Bible that link up with the same thing. Okay? And this was an occasion to deceive the world for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe to the stones and stocks the incommunicable name. Okay. So um, we just went through a few things just to keep in mind these images according to the Bible were set up by people who the Bible calls wicked um, heathens, uh, we're talking about images, um, and deceiving the whole world and keeping this image as a law. Okay. Remember these things. I'm going to go to second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three, right? Second Thessalonians, second Thessalonians chapter 
2 verse 3. Okay, it says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, okay, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, Showing himself that he is God. Okay. So this is uh, just going back to why this image was set up. Um, originally it was to honor this one man as being the Messiah, the Savior. Okay. And to deceive the world. And it did this successfully. Even our own people for the most part, believe that Jesus is a white man, okay? They have deceived most people throughout the world, and um, no one's first initial uh, response to what color is the Messiah, no one initially believes that he could even be a black man. But the scripture gives you multiple uh multiple descriptions and uh, precepts to prove that he was in fact a black man but no one believes that because this image is so powerful they will they won't even go into the bible they say they believe in to validate what they say um is the truth okay so second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 we're gonna read this again says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, let's go to, let's... Uh, jump down to verse 8 because in Job 9 24 uh, it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked he covered the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he and the evidence is in the portraits they set up who who is deceiving the nations into believing and worshiping them as being God's people right Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 it says and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Okay, so this image is um, after the workings of Satan. And Satan and these people, these Caucasian people who exalt themselves as God are constantly referred to and contrasted with Satan compared to Satan or take on the spirit of Satan right it says even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. This goes back into um, our people believing in this white Jesus contrary to what the Bible says, okay? And contrary to what the truth is. Um, verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. If you don't care about what the truth is and you just going to hold on to your own ideas and your own initial um, assumptions about what the truth is, then you don't have the love of the truth in you. You don't want to see past um, what you can grasp yourself. Okay, you don't want to be taught. You have to empty your cup before it can be filled. Okay, it says, they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. So if you are willing to believe something without doing research and validating it and making sure what you are talking about is the truth then the most high himself will let you believe that okay if you don't want to be taught you don't want to empty your cup and come before the most high as a child and just and believe him okay and believe the truth when you hear it then he will send you a strong delusion to believe it, to believe a lie. It says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believeth not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, okay? And we'll get into how unrighteous this thing is, um... In a little bit. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Okay, let's... Okay, we just read that this image, these lying wonders are after the working of Satan, okay? And we're connecting. I told you that... um, This Caucasian race who is setting themselves up to be exalted as God is referred to throughout the Bible as um, being compared and being similar and being the equivalent even to Satan. All right. So Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How are the I'm sorry. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from the ground, which did, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay. Still talking about these same people. um, um, Being set up and being exalted as the most high. Verse 14 it says I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Now, we're talking about Lucifer and hell, and I don't want you to get confused because of um, what Christianity might have taught you. Lucifer is not a... um, Lucifer and Satan is... In the context that I'm reading is referring to men on the earth, a nation of people on the earth. Okay, and it's going to... prove that in a second hell is not um an underground lake of fire that souls are tortured in right hell and heaven are conditions played out on the earth okay um and we can get to that in in another lesson but verse 16 it says they that they that see thee shall narrowly narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the whole made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms okay so this whole this passage though you might hear lucifer in hell and that might throw you off verse 16 should reel you back in and uh reaffirm that this is not a spiritual demon or angel or um whatever you might attribute to your idea of satan this is a nation of people this it says verse 16 they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms okay these people this man these people are controlling the earth 
and wickedness and unrighteousness and um, evil. Okay. We'll get more into that too. And just to show you that, just a little bit more to show you that this is a man, right? We're going to say stay in the same chapter, Isaiah 14. We just stopped at 16. Let's go to verse 21. Okay. It says, Pre prepare slaughter for his children. Okay. So this man, this nation of people are people who have children. Prepare slaughter for his children. For the iniquity of their fathers, okay, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and the remnant and the son and the nephew, saith the Lord. Okay, so these people are, these Caucasian people, and just to make it more um, direct America okay is what the Bible expresses is mystery Babylon okay America is the nation that the Bible attributes to being mystery Babylon and we'll get into that right let's go to Revelation 13 14 Revelation 13, 14. Okay. No, actually, that's not the one I wanted. We'll get that one, though. But uh, right now, it's Revelation 11 and 8. Okay. Because America and these modern nations, like I said earlier, this is a history book, but it's also prophetic. And it speaks about times and things and uh, concepts and ideas that are um, that are present day realities okay so America is described in the Bible as a few things okay if you go to the Apocrypha you can um, find that it is called Asareth okay and we I, I'll get into that in the next video I do about um America being Asareth and also being called the land of the north, um, as well as Babylon, um, Mystery Babylon, Egypt, and Sodom. And we'll get into a part of this right now because it goes into the, it, it, it correlates with the lesson we're doing right now. It says in Revelation 11 7, okay. And when they shall have finished their testimony, speaking about the two witnesses, let's get um, just context on this so I don't leave you forgetting or leave you hanging on the understanding. Let's go to 11 and 3, Revelation 11, 3. It says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, that, the, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth okay verse 4 these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the god of the earth okay so we're getting into uh where these two witnesses are and in the next video i'll give an in-depth um breakdown on where these two witnesses predominantly would be because these witnesses are two parts of one nation um, sometimes in the Bible referred to as two separate nations the nations being the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Israel being called Judah comprised of the Levites the um, Benjamites and the Judites right so Revelation 11 and 7 get to the point says and when they shall have finished their testimony speaking on the two witnesses these two nations um which are to be one nation in the near future and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottom bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them okay pause right there 
It says, the beast that descendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. I just told you that the, the two witnesses are um, two factions of one nation of people being the Israelites, right? And this beast is a is is not a animal okay okay or um some abstract idea of a dragon or anything like this the um beast is let me let me show you <laughs> this is the beast this is the beast and we gonna uh prove this too this is the beast though this is the image of the beast we'll get into that okay verse eight and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay, so it says the bodies of the two witnesses would be dead and lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Okay, so... If you know anything about the Israelites' history and with Sodom and Egypt, you know that the story of Sodom is they are destroyed with fire because of the sodomy, homosexuality, right? They wanted to rape angels, okay? Just to get you understand the mindset that these sick people are in, okay? They were destroyed for homosexuality. Now, if you go to Egypt, Egypt is our history concerning Egypt as we were slaves. This is a this is a major captivity for the Israelites where we served hard bondage and built up their cities, just like we do in America, just like we were slaves here in America. Okay, and just like uh, the correlation with Sodom in America is every state now is it's legal to um, marry. <coughs> so <lock> it. <coughs> it's legal to marry uh, for homosexuals to get married. And there's uh, in the military, I'm not I'm not totally sure how many of the states have started messing with this, but. In the military, it's lawful for you to sleep with animals, right? Uh, engage in bestiality in the countries you go to war in, okay? And I I'm pretty sure there are states that have started um, moving this idea around in the politics. And we also know that they are pushing for pedophilia, to become legal in this land okay so this is how this is the great city which is mystery babylon which is also spiritually sodom and egypt okay get more on this let's go to revelation chapter 13 verse 14 okay this is this is more on the beast, right? The beast, the image of the beast. Revelation 13 verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwelleth that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live, okay? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, okay? This goes back into this image being reinforced and enforced as a law and even punishable by death, okay? You understand that, um, during the slave trade, the Caucasian races, the Europeans, the French, the Spanish came to North America with this image as a law. And if you did not worship it, you were killed. 
okay, it was enforced um, on these people, punishable by death, okay, a false image, okay, and it says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, so we're not talking about a big white Jesus in the sky, a hologram from uh, Project Blue Beam or anything like this that will speak to us and cause us to believe that this must be the Savior in the sky, right? When it says they cause the image of the beast to speak, we're talking about these motion pictures, right? These movies like The Passion of the Christ and all these other uh, biblically inaccurate movies, uh, especially because they portray imposters to be the biblical people, right? And it says they cause the image of the beast to talk. When you watch these movies and you hear some of these scriptures come out, okay, it's easy to be deceived if you don't already know what the truth is. And they're presenting you with something that um, messes with you emotionally a little bit. It doesn't take much to uh, trigger someone's emotions and their logic is gone. They throw it out the window, okay, because it's something they feel connected to. Just put a few feel-good scriptures in there and put this white man up as being Yahawashai and all these other characters as being white people. And it is not hard to deceive the whole earth, especially when you control the media and you are pushing all of the images of these biblical characters. There's a movie that just came out um, about Samson, and he's a big white boy, okay? And we know that Samson had dreads, and white people don't get dreads, okay? Let's just put it like that. I mean, y'all try, but... Solomon had dreads. He was a dark-skinned black man. He was from the tribe of Judah, okay? And we know uh, from Jeremiah 14, 2, that uh, Judah is black. They're black people, okay? Let's go to... Okay, let's finish this off. Verse 15 again. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Motion pictures that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, so this is history already. This is something that they have already done. Okay, in the book of Revelation, this is something that has been manifested already. Okay, let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until time and times and the dividing of time. Okay? So, this image and these philosophies that come with this image speak great lies and contradict the Bible completely, right? And he shall speak great words against the Most High. So, they are not um, being truthful with what they put out into the world uh, concerning what the Most High's word is. Okay, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. We just read that the saints of the Most High, the northern and uh, southern kingdom, Israel and Judah, which are the two witnesses, would lie in the their dead bodies will lie in the great city, which is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Okay, so they warn us out uh, first through slavery, then um, the political ideas they used after slavery to control us and um, monitor us and 
separate us and cut us off from the same opportunities and keep us at the bottom of society. Okay, it says, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. This goes back into um, them making this a law punishable by death. Okay, if you didn't worship this uh, image, it was enforced as a law that you had to be put to death. Okay, and they shall be given into his hand until time and times and the dividing of times. And I believe we read about that with the two witnesses. Same thing. Um, yeah, same thing. Revelation 11 and 11 and 7. Okay. Let me see. Okay, I didn't read it. But Revelation 11 and verse 9, it says, And they of the people and kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Okay, which is um, the time, times, and dividing of times. Okay. Um, yeah, so... One more on this, just to tie it all together. It's like I said, this image is a Caucasian man. We know that the Caucasian people put up this image because of what this image looks like. It's common sense, okay? And like I said, um, Job 9.24 will uh, come full circle. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Okay, so. Key word, wicked. And the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is in rulership by wicked people. Now, this word wicked, as we've been going through in these verses, we're going to bring it home, right? go to Malachi 1, Malachi 1, 4, okay, because um, in a later lesson, I'll break it down more, but what you're going to find out is the Caucasian race, just like everybody else, has a biblical identity, okay, we're not called white, black, Chinese, Japanese, um, Russian, and all this other stuff, these are man-made terminologies that, um, are not the biblical identities that each nation has. The Caucasian race, which is the people that set this image up, the people who are in rulership of this earth right now, okay, their biblical identity is Edomites, okay? Um, their forefather was Esau, okay? And it says, verse well, actually, we'll start one and one just to finish this out, give you a full understanding of this real quick. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, when hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob and I hated Esau. And laid his mountains and his heritage to waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Okay, so this is a word from the Lord uh, to be delivered by Malachi to the nation of Israel. He says, um, Esau and Jacob were brothers. Esau, which became the progenitor of the Edomites, which is the so-called white people, the Caucasian race. Okay, that's their biblical biblical identity. Jacob is the biblical identity of the Israelites. His name was changed to Israel after he wrestled with an angel. And he became the father of the 12 patriarchs, which make up the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay, so the Most High said, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I love Jacob. Okay, so 
the most this is getting into God choosing people over other people, God loving people and hating others, okay? So it's not all love with the Most High. We have to understand that. It says, And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage to waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Okay, this is going back into the beast that ascends from the bottomless pit. We know this beast is the Caucasian race. And the bottomless pit is equivalent with Europe. Okay, if you look at the resources that um, Europe is able to export, most of their um, resources are machinery and technology and things of this sort. There's no natural resources in um, Europe, which is part of the reason they um, had to colonize and go to war with every other nation over their resources is something that was set up like this, okay? They took over the land of Europe and because of the lack of nutritional resources and other, um, other economic resources like gold and oil and things of this nature, they would move into places like Africa or um, Asia and eventually into Western, the Western Hemisphere, which is North and South America, right? So it was set up for them um, once they came out of the caves during the Renaissance, which is the period we're talking about when this uh, image was set up. Uh, they came out of the caves and Alexander the Great uh, expanded the empire of the Greeks, right? It says, whereas Edom saith we are impoverished. So this is a time when they were in caves. This is just more on the same history. But we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against the whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Okay, Salakia so says, Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Okay, so they say we, we're impoverished, right? We don't have nothing right now, but we're coming out these caves and we're going to rebuild all these desolate places, right? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Back to that whole wicked being... Um, related to a nation of people they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the lord hath indignation forever so this nation of people god hates them okay point blank period um going back to verse two and three jacob have i loved esau have i hated right so these people are called the border of wickedness and this is throughout the bible but just to um, bring this home, false image, research iconoclasm during the Renaissance. Okay, this is when this is set up. Because Europe, Europe and all these nations where these Caucasian people have set up shop, and have taken this land. This is not their original land. Europe, Russia, France, Spain. These were all places that were ruled by white people. I mean by uh, melanated people. Dark skinned people. Okay. So even Europe is not really their homeland. Or their um, original homeland. Right. Their original inheritance given to them. Um. They come out of the caves. That's the only uh, place that's their, like when people say go back home, white people, y'all have to go to the caves if y'all talking about anybody go home, okay? Y'all came out of the caves, destroyed these people that originally inhabited Europe, destroyed their images, um, destroyed our images, our religious images, and try to take our history from us, but we are waking up in droves right now all over the world 
and we are coming back to who we are, what our true history is, and who our God is. Okay, and soon we're gonna take this land back, and this earth is gonna be given to the righteous. And with that, I say, Shalom, Yasharala, Kahala, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shabarakatha. Y'all take it easy.